true today, right? It's not true today. Many are praying with tears in this place, which I was meant to understand among the White House staff, there are many godly Christians who pray there unbeknown to others. Say so their tears are dropping in the place. Maybe that's the reason why there was some kind of kindness on the face of the Lord towards the White House. And as we were speaking, I saw a slithering green anaconda sized like snake seated on a sofa in the Oval Office. You know, the, the way that the snake was seated on the sofa, it didn't look like a snake sitting on the sofa, but like a seductress seated seductively on a sofa. You know, that kind of a position. But it's, instead of a woman, it's a snake. Long anaconda size, like huge green color snake. So, when I saw all this, I prayed ardently before the Lord for the U.S. Similar to how Abraham prayed. You know, I came to the U.S. first in 91. And from 91 right up to now, I visited the U.S. every year. And we have close to a 1,000 partners who support our ministry. And more than 1,000 people who pray for our ministry. Good, sincere Americans. So I remembered all of them. And the many, many pastors that I know in the U.S. And now I come to know all of you wonderful saints. So I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, you said, you heard the prayer of Abraham. If there were 50 righteous people, you will not destroy it. And Abraham came down to 10 righteous people. And you told him that if there are 10 righteous people, you will not destroy the city. I said, Lord, I can guarantee you there are more than 10 righteous people in this nation. If I do not know about everybody else, at least I know that there are 1,000 of my partners who are righteous. <laughs> That's for your sake, you know. Right? For your sake. And the Lord looked at me and he said, You know, the difference between Sodom and Gomorrah and the U.S. is this. The reason why I heard Abraham's prayer and the reason why I will not hear yours is the difference is this. He said, Sodom and Gomorrah did not know me and was given over to sin whereas the U.S. had turned her back against me. Now that's the difference. Sodom and Gomorrah did not know God. She was totally given to sin. So Abraham's prayer was effective because he was one man standing in the gap for a nation. Whereas this nation, which was founded on righteousness, your first president, Josh Washington, he knelt down, cried unto God and dedicated this land unto God. Last year, the Lord revealed to me, among many of your presidents, there are four righteous ones in heaven. There may be others in heaven, but among the many, God sees four of them who are very, very righteous and they are standing before God for America. Four righteous presidents. So, America is not a nation who doesn't know God. But she has turned her back away from God. If you have a king who says, this is not a Christian nation, how low you have sink, right? You have gone down so low. You don't stand a chance like Sodom and Gomorrah anymore. You disqualified. In the early days, now this is another discovery I made. In the early days, 
when the capital was built the capital had church services on every Sundays and the third president of the US Thomas Jefferson and the fourth president of the US James Madison attended church every Sunday the state became the church but now there are voices in the nation who calls for separation of state and church once upon a time they were together they were one they were not two they were one but now it's separated so we are separated God will judge you differently abomination of desolation is going to destroy this nation and this abomination will also creep cunningly into the churches my dear brothers and sisters this is part one of the word of God tomorrow I will share with you part two which I received this morning from none other than the mighty warrior angel Michael he came and stood before me and he spoke for half an hour about the next part of this word now let let us recap as we close now God sees bad things in the nation God sees abomination in the nation but it's not there is there's no hope for this nation there is and what what must do Elijah must rise up that is the counsel of the Lord for you Elijah must rise up Elijah means two things the church and the Christian leaders they must rise up they must stand up for righteousness God is looking for such people Elijah must rise up if the Elijah rise up and they stand up and they contend for righteousness and godliness this nation can be saved Amen all these destructions and these calamities can be avoided oops I forgot to share with you one very important point when the Lord revealed about divine judgment coming upon the White House I told you about this angel of destruction do you remember that yes. it's going to strike the Capitol and the Supreme Court and then the Lord said he has sharpened his sword to strike this nation with a series of earthquakes to chastise and discipline the nation towards what towards repentance then he said if this does not humble them then seven other calamities of natural destruction are appointed to come now let me repeat one more time mercy can triumph over judgment all is not lost I have come sent to warn like Jonah was sent to warn there is hope like there was hope for Nineveh you know the king of Nineveh an unrighteous wicked man he said who knows if God cannot be entreated who knows if he cannot forgive us if an unrighteous wicked king can say like that how much more you the people wash by the blood of Jesus Christ how much more you you have a greater right to come and stand before God and demand Lord spare our nation you have a greater right Lord spare our nation spare our nation help us to rise up once again to our former glory to be a white house true white house white house of purity white house of holiness 
White House of Faith. You know the Statue of Liberty standing in the Hudson River is not only there putting, holding up her flames as a Statue of Liberty for all those weary laden to come to America to find rest and solace and freedom. No. The church should be like that. Holding up that torch of holiness. Amen. Holding up the torch of righteousness. Amen. Saying this is that standard. You hold it up and show to the rest of the world this is the standard. You know you were originally raised for that purpose. You were originally raised for that purpose. Amen. Why has that fire been extinguished? Why? Why has the fire gone out? You know, this fire has now gone to Asia. It has now gone to Africa. Now they are holding up that torch which was once upon a time in your hands. Won't you get it back again? You can. If you want to. Let's pray. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. If these words bear witness with your spirits, ask yourself now, what am I going to do about it? What is my church going to do about it? What is the collective church leadership in our community, in our town, in our city going to do about it? How are we going to trumpet this warning from coast to coast in the country? What am I going to do? Remember Abraham. He bent his knees. He held on to the hands of God and he pleaded with love and compassion. Remember Moses. He held on to the hands of God and he said, Lord, if you will strike the Israelites, first you strike me. Strike my name from the book of life. He was willing to lay down his life even to to the point of losing his salvation for the saving grace upon his nation. Do you love your nation so much that you are willing to do like that? Jeremiah cried day and night for the perishing daughters of Jerusalem. He said, Oh, my head as waters my eyes like fountains of tears that I cry day and night. Can the Son of Man find faith among these who are here? If you are here, cannot put away sin from your life and leave a consecrated life unto righteousness. What hope is there for the unbelieving people in this nation? This is a question the Lord Jesus is asking you. If you compromise the standards of God, if you compromise godly principles and holiness and allow filth and abomination to come into my house, what hope is there for the unbelieving people in your nation? When my house 
which is called by my name, is a place of darkness without any light. What hope is there for those who are always sitting in darkness? If you will refuse to pay heed to my voice and turn back from your unrighteousness, what hope is there for them who are the children of unrighteousness? Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I see the Lord Jesus Christ standing at the back of this church near where the cameraman is standing and he unfurls a long scroll and the scroll stretches out, opens up all the way right up to the front here and he's reading in the scroll and in the scroll is written the many, many promises that were given to the many churches, your callings, your giftings to the many churches and to the many ministries and to the many leaders. What have they done? God is a covenant-keeping God. But when you break your part of the covenant, then the covenant becomes null and white. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus tells me now, all the pastors who are gathered here, if you can come together and bend your knees and pray. Bring your people together. Bend your knees and pray and seek my face. I who spared Nineveh, won't I spare you? Break down all the walls that you have built around you. Break those walls. Come together in the bond of unity. Break. Break those walls. And tear away those masks of falsehood. Those masks of hypocrisy. Tear them away. And present your naked heart before your God. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. And I see the Lord Jesus pointing to me, written in the scrolls. Angels have been appointed to stand guard over your churches. And these angels have been commanded to instruct, to lead, to guide you into the ways and the purposes of God. If you be willing to pay heat, if you be willing to sanctify a fast in your church, to call for a corporate body to fast and seek the face of your God, then you will be not known, you will be made known the ways of God. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I see these angels appointed for your churches, equipped and laden with gifts for your church. Gifts for the leadership and gifts for the common believers. 
even gifts for the little children, even for the suckling babies, thoughtless, they have gifts for them, gifts for the youths, gifts for the senior citizens. But first, you must cleanse your house. Cleanse your house and put it in order for the glory of God to come in. If you be willing and be sincere, I see these angels with drawn swords and they will show you what are the things that causes contamination in your church. And also, if you be willing to allow God to cut down the unfruitful branches and the dead leaves that are still hanging on, then you will be pruned to bring forth more fruit, abundant fruit, and you will become a glorious tree of life. Your church will become a glorious tree of life to bless your community. The Bible says, the tree of life bears for 12 kinds of fruits and its leaves are for the healing of the nations and your church will become like that. It will bring forth those kind of fruits and you will bring forth those leaves of healing that will heal your community. It will feed your community with spiritual food and natural food. These are the days the true people of God will see the God of Israel in action like how He fed, He watered, and he protected 3 million Israelites in the wilderness. He sustained them supernaturally for 40 years. Your eyes will see what happened then is also true for this day. You will see multiplication of food in your homes. You will see multiplication of resources when you walk in obedience with God. When you are willing to cleanse the temple and consecrate it and rededicate it to the Lord your God. Again, I hear the Lord Jesus saying, Tell my ministers, to seek me with all their heart. To lay down the strongholds. Lay down their petty quarrels. Their petty indifferences. Lay it down. And embrace my love. And embrace my love for each other. Again and again the word comes unto me. Cleanse the temple. For the glory of God is going to come. Cleanse the temple. Thank you, wonderful God. Shall we all stand up for prayer? Holy Father, I have committed to your children all the words that you have shown to me. Lord, I pray, they who have ears to hear have heard it. And they who have hearts to understand have understood it. And now I pray, Lord, show them what they should do. Show them, Lord, 
you are our God. You are our Redeemer. You are our Sustainer. There is none like you, Lord. We have no other God except you, Lord. To whom would we go, Lord? Except you. To you alone, we will raise up our hands and lift up our voices and make our cries known to you. Oh God, spare your people. Spare your nation, Lord. Spare your people whom you chose from the four corners of this earth. Spare your people, Lord. Remember all the good she has done, Lord. Remember, Lord, the many, many missionaries who have gone out from this land and they never returned back home, Lord. They laid down their lives in the nations for which you sent them. Lord, remember how this great nation has helped the poor. They have fed the poor. They have clothed the poor. They have given food to the hungry. They have given clothes to the naked. Lord, they have brought your eternal word to the four corners of this world. Remember, Lord. Remember. Remember. Your word tells us you are not unrighteous to forget all the good works that we have done in your name. But you always remember. So now I ask you, please remember, Lord. Please remember. Please remember. The millions of believers in Asia, millions of believers in Russia, in Africa, because of these Americans, Lord. Because of them, Lord. Because they sent for their money. They sent for the word. They sent for their missionaries. Lord in heaven, remember. Remember, Lord. Remember. You are not unrighteous to forget. Remember, Lord. Remember. Lord, you showed me that the tears of George Washington are still fresh before your eyes. They are still those tears soaked sand is kept in heaven. And the tears voice are still coming up before your ears. Remember, Lord. Remember. Remember, Lord. Remember. We lift up our hands to you now, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, uniting all our hearts together right now. Lord, we pray, let your mercy triumph over judgment, Lord. Let your mercy, you are rich in mercies. You are a good God, full of riches in mercy. Remember, Lord. Remember, Lord Jesus, oh loving Father, remember the wounds of the Lord Jesus. Look at his hands, Lord, those holes in his hands. Look at his legs, the holes on his legs. Look at his forehead, all those marks from the crown of thorns. Look at his back, look at his thighs. All the stripes and the tearing, the scarred flesh and the wounds and the scars from the whips. Lord Jesus, oh holy God, look at all that. Look at all that. All that is for this great nation, Lord. All that for this great nation. Remember that, Lord. Remember that. Remember that. Remember the blood of Jesus. Lord, it is true. The blood of the innocent is crying out to you. It is true. The cries of the sins of this land are crying out to you. It's true. However, Lord, 
the blood of Jesus is shouting louder than the Christ Lord. That blood of Jesus is crying louder. It is crying louder for this nation than all of the Christ Lord. Oh Lord, oh Lord God, you are full of goodness. Abundant in goodness. Abundant in truth. Long suffering. You are slow to anger. Of great kindness. Remember Lord. Remember. Remember Lord. Remember. Lord. God. Your people have heard your word today. They have determined in their hearts. They are not going to rest until they are not going to give you any rest until you make this nation a nation of praise and glory for you, Lord. They are not going to rest, Lord. They are not going to give you rest until you bless this land. Until Mercy will triumph over judgment. Lord, they have determined they are going to seek your face. They have determined they are going to fast and pray. They have determined to stand in the gap and hold your hands, Lord. So remember, Lord. Remember. Remember all this, Lord Jesus. And I pray. Yes, Lord, they will surely do this, Lord. They will surely do this, Lord. They will surely do. I pray you will spare this nation, Lord. Spare this nation, Lord. Let her not be ashamed before her enemies, Lord. Let her not be ashamed before her enemies, Lord. Already now the Muslim nations are sneering at her. They are looking down upon her. They are even saying, Oh, the eagle has fallen. The eagle's feathers have been plucked out. Lord, they are sneering at her. Let not this nation be humiliated before her enemies, Lord. Remember, Lord, how you have blessed this nation. Lord, for your name's sake, be merciful unto her. Be gracious unto her. And help her, Lord, to, to taste your goodness one more time. One more time. Like Samson prayed, Lord, remember me one more time. So I pray, Lord, remember and strengthen this nation one more time. Amen. One more time, Lord. Amen. Let her arise from her ashes. Let her arise. And let the Son of Righteousness arise with healings on His wings over this nation, Lord. And let her be crowned with glory. Let her be clothed with glory and honor. And let her stand before you justified and sanctified Lord thank you Father we lift up our hands to you we give you thanks O God O Lord our God for hearing our prayer and we know you will do you will surely do a good work upon this nation upon the churches and upon all your Christian leaders, Lord. Lord, we lift up the head of state of this nation before your presence right now, Lord. Lord, we pray. Hold him back from secret sins, Lord. Hold him back from presumptuous sins, Lord. Forgive him of his pride and arrogance, Lord. 
Fill him, Lord, with the knowledge of your will. Fill him, Lord, with righteousness. Make him taste and see your goodness. Fill him with the knowledge of your will. That he may know what is the good, the perfect and the acceptable will of God. Lord, we lift up all the secretaries, Lord. We lift up every senator. We lift up all the governors. <clears throat> we lift up all the military brass. We lift up all those in authority <clears throat> before your presence right now. Lord, fill them with their knowledge of your will, Lord. We pray that you will send forth your Holy Spirit to convict them of sin, of righteousness, and of the judgments of God. We pray that they will come out of the snare of the devil and make Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives. Every one of our Supreme Court judges, we bless them with the knowledge of the Holy One of Israel. That they will not bow down to popular pressure. But they will bow down to the knowledge of the truth of righteousness, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will surround the borders of this nation with your presence as a wall of fire, Lord. Protect her, Lord, even from outside enemy forces. Only you can do it, Lord. Some trust in chariots, Lord. Some trust in horses. But we, your people, we put our trust in the Lord our God to protect our borders, to protect our families, to protect our children. And to protect your heritage, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's all lift up our holy hands. And bless the name of the living God. Come on, open your heart and bless the name of God. He's a good God. His grace and mercy endures forever and ever.